Hi everybody, in this short video, we're going to look at CSS animations, one of the most fundamental ways you have for animating things in HTML. So let's get started. If you've been following some of my videos already, you've probably heard me saying this many times. An animation is a visualization of something changing over a period of time. To be a little bit more specific, in CSS, the word something is actually specifically referring to CSS properties. Now, this is pretty vague and very generic, so let's try to make it more real. Let's look at an example. So here's an example of a blue circle that's moving left and right. And as you can imagine, this circle is implemented as a CSS animation. The visualization is a circle moving. The CSS properties that we'll get to in a little bit that are actually changing are ones that actually affect the position of the circle, causing it to move from left and right. So with that, let's go into a little bit more detail on what a CSS animation actually is. So CSS animation is only made up of two things. You have the animation declaration, which is pretty easy, and you'll get to that in a little bit. But the more interesting part is the second thing is specify, and that is known as the keyframes. And you might be familiar with keyframes in animation tools like Flash or After Effects. And just like in those tools, keyframes in CSS specify exactly what happens at that particular moment in time. So the keyframes are what define what properties get animated, when they get animated, and more interestingly, how they get animated. So let's get the easy one out of the way first. And that is the animation CSS property that lives inside a style rule where you want the animation to become active. So this property takes three values. The first one points to the name of the keyframes you want this particular animation to use. In our case, we want to point to the keyframes identified only a slide, and don't worry if the exact details of what a keyframe is doesn't quite make sense to you right now. We'll look at that in just a few moments. The second value specifies how long you want this animation to run. A small value means your animation will run really quickly. A large value means that your animation will take its sweet time in running to completion. And the last property determines how many times you want this animation to run, how many times you want it to loop. And this can be a number like one or 10 or a thousand, or it can be the word infinite like I have in this example to have your animation run forever. So now we get to the interesting part. We get to the keyframes. And like I mentioned earlier, this is where the real magic happens. First of all, notice how the keyframes are declared. You start with the at keyframes keyword, followed by the name you want to give these set of keyframes. And in our case, that is the word slide. Now inside your at keyframes block, you have your style rules that make up the actual keyframes. And unlike traditional style rules, where you have a selector that starts them off, what you have here are percentage values. And that might seem a bit bizarre, but it makes sense when you think about what exactly they're representing. These percentage values represent the percentage of the animation that has completed. In other words, when your animation is just starting, you have completed 0% of your animation. That means a 0% keyframe will become active. When your animation is halfway done, the 50% keyframe becomes active. And at the end, your animation is completely finished. The 100% keyframe will become active instead. So inside each of your keyframes, you can also specify the CSS properties and their values. And it's these values that will get animated as your animation activates each keyframe. So in this example, we're animating the translate 3D function. And more specifically, we're animating the values that correspond to the horizontal position. So in our animation, you can see that the horizontal value is changing from zero pixels at the beginning to 800 pixels at the middle and returning back to zero pixels at the end. And also for the 0% and 50% mark, I'm also defining a timing function, or also known as the easing function, that alters the rate at which your values change. You might be familiar with this, but we're going to do much greater detail in a different video, but I will touch upon timing functions one more time because of how important they are. Now enough with the theory, let's actually go ahead and create our own CSS animation. Oh wait, not yet. There's one annoying thing we need to cover first, and that thing is vendor prefixes. Because CSS animations are still pretty new, we need to vendor prefix them to ensure they work for majority of your users. That is vendor prefix the animation property, as well as the add keyframes declaration. And in general though, I wouldn't recommend using vendor prefixes and having many copies of your markup throughout your document. Instead, do what all the cool kids do and use a library like Prefix Free that takes care of the vendor prefixing shenanigans without having you duplicate any of your markup. And with this, now we're ready to create our own CSS animation. So we have a pretty simple example here. 
and it's of a blue circle. And this blue circle is made of the star rules you see here and the HTML, which is basically a div element with an ID value of my circle and a class value of circle as well. And right now, as you can see, the circle is being very boring and just standing stationary, but we're going to fix that. We're going to use all the newfound CSS knowledge we just gained and use it to apply an animation that caused the circle to move from left to right, just like the example you saw at the very beginning. So the first thing I'm going to do is specify the animation declaration. And the animation property is something I want to specify on a star rule that affects the circle directly. So I'm going to go and just target my circle because the ID value for the circle is also my circle and have my star rule contain the animation property as so. So I have the animation property and the first value corresponds to the name of the keyframes I want to indicate. I haven't created my keyframes yet, but let's assume I'm going to call it slide. So I'm going to specify slide right now. The next step is duration. I want this animation to run for two seconds and I want it to loop forever. So the last value I'm going to specify to animation is the keyword for infinite. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is specify the keyframes themselves. So as I mentioned earlier, we are calling our keyframes slide. And just to be consistent with the slides you saw earlier as well, I'm going to have three keyframes, 0%, 50%, and 100%. OK, so now we have the basic structure of our animation defined. You have the animation property and you have the keyframes. Now it comes the fun part, specifying the properties that you will specify that will cause the animation. So because we're an animate position, a performant way of doing that is by using the transform properties translate 3D function. So I'm going to specify translate 3D, zero pixels for the horizontal position, zero pixels for the vertical position, and zero pixels for the Z position. And this is the 0% mark, which is pretty much the beginning of our animation. And because I don't want to type this over and over again, I'm going to copy the same declaration for transform into the 50% and 100% mark. But for the 50% mark, I will change the value from 0 pixels to 800 pixels. So the circle starts off at 0, goes to 100, and returns to 0 at the very end. Now at this point, you're probably wondering why the animation isn't actually running. And the reason for that has to go back to vendor prefixing. And because I don't want to copy the markup over and over again for each of the browsers, I'm going to use the prefix free library that I talked about earlier. So I have a copy of it on my server. I'm going to refer, I'm going to, refer to it right now. So go directly to it. Make sure I spelled it correctly. Perfect. And close the script tag. And now you'll see that your animation now works. You, know, you have an animation that's at zero pixels, goes to 800 and comes back all over a period of two seconds. Now, I can go a little crazy as well. Let's say that I actually want to have it go up a little bit or actually go down a little bit as part of its run. Let's specify value of negative 100 pixels. And once I've done that, notice that the animation actually goes up by 100 pixels and then slides all the way back down. Let's actually make it positive 100 pixels so I can see it better. 300 pixels, just to go a little crazy. And I can specify a value like, let's say, opacity and specify a value of 0.2. So it fades in, then fades back. And these are all, you have a lot of freedom in specifying the various properties you want. And notice that even though I have opacity specified at 0.2 in the 50% mark, I don't have it specified at all in the 0 or 100% value. And that's because the default value of opacity kicks in, which is 100% visibility. So if you don't have to explicitly take care of specifying all of these properties, you actually go pretty pretty nuts and do whatever you want all over the place. And in fact, I don't have to even have keyframes that are 0, 50, or 100. I can have this be 0 to 20% and then 100%, which means that at the 20% of the completion, the circle suddenly goes to the very end, then it oscillates back. So definitely take some time and experiment with all the sorts of fun things you can do with these animations beyond the very basics that I've talked about. And I will have more videos that go into more detail on some of the more complicated uses of these animations, well more complicated than what you have seen currently here. So with that, let's go ahead and start wrapping up the, the examples that we have so far. Already, so you basically got a lightning quick overview of how to work with CSS animations, at least the basics of how to work with them. And in future videos, I'll go into much greater detail for we only scratch the surface of all the cool things you can do with them. And while moving a circle from one side of the screen to the other is pretty cool, there actually are far cooler things you can do and certainly far more useful things you can do as well. So in the meantime, 
you want to learn more about CSS animations, go to kubra.com and just search for it. I've written extensively about it, and you'll find other videos as well that build upon what you've learned. If you have any questions, the easiest way to get in contact with me is to post in the forums at forum.kubra.com. And you can also reach me in other ways on Twitter at Krupa, on Facebook, or on YouTube as well. And if you want to learn more about animations, definitely check out my book, Animation in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I talk a lot about animations in CSS, including the topic you just saw here. And you can find it on Amazon in paperback and Kindle editions. So with that, I will see you all next time. Bye.